hope you're dancing in the sky. I hope you're singing in the angels' choir. And I hope the angels know what they have. I'll bet it's all night up in heaven since you.
since you woke with the dawn. And we'll meet again some light. I finished the race throughout the trial. I kept my faith No longer do I suffer My body's been made whole I'm flying with the angels And heaven's now my home I'm flying with the angels And heaven's now my home
I'm sorry that I left you I know you feel alone But God told me that He called me to come home And what seemed to be Took my hand and led me toward the sky As I ascended into heaven Beyond the pearly gates Angels were rejoicing Then I saw His radiant face God's eyes shone down upon me From the glory of His throne He said, enter into paradise Cause heaven's now your home I fought the fight I finished the race Throughout the trial I kept my faith No longer do I suffer My body's been made whole I'm flying with the angels And heaven's now my home God told me not to worry He said you'd be okay Because eternity's forever And we'll meet again someday I fought the fight I finished the race Throughout the trial I kept my faith No longer do I suffer My angels And heaven's now my home Flying with the angels and Heaven's now my
And I am still and wait here in the silence until you come and sit a while with me. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me Will somebody say your name? Cause I can't reach out
the members of the immediate family. If you can meet me in the vestry, uh, we can just take the door, the first door right there on my right, which is your left. And we can meet in just take the right, and then go through the door on the right, and we'll meet in the vestry. So all the immediate family members, please meet with me in the vestry. <laughs>
here.
standing for the opening prayer. Gracious Father, we exalt you as Lord of our lives. We thank you that we are still breathing and we recognize that you are indeed God. We are in a funeral service and this is a very sad occasion for many. But today I pray God you be the great comforter. Comfort the hearts of those who are mourning. But more so Lord let it be a lesson to those who have not yet given their lives to you that death is appointed unto every man. I pray, eternal Father, that you will especially strengthen the family members. Use this as an opportunity to draw them closer together and to draw them closer to you. I pray for the services today and I ask that all will be done in order. I pray that in the end, your name will be glorified. Continue to bless and keep us, we pray, as we tell you thanks in Jesus' name. By way of instructions, I'm going to ask that you either turn your phones off or put them on vibration mode so that you won't disturb the service. Bathroom facilities are to my left down the stairs or if you can't manage the stairs there's a bathroom at the back to my right that's the next door to the glass windows there. We're going to ask that there be no sale or use of alcohol or any smoking material on the church compound. So if that is happening on the outside, we ask that you desist from that, you move that to the outside. Those who are going to be taking part, we ask you to use the, the lower podium there. And we pray that we will have a decent and incident-free homegoing service for Kathleen. Thank you very much. At this time, we will have the first lesson taken from Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1 to 11. This will be done by Rejone and Troya grandchildren. Following that, we will have a tribute in song from Patsy Sterling, family friend. In that order, please.
praise the Lord. We are reminded there is a time for everything under the sun. And what a day that will be when Jesus we see. At this time, we will have a selection by Annie Benford. Annie B. Bent is not here. Mrs. Barnett Phillips. And then a tribute by Matoya Edwards, followed by the remembrance by Cordell Rose. In that order, please. Who tries the tears from your eyes? 
know with you around was an experience of a lifetime and I learned a lot. When you left, you broke a part of me, seeing that you were the only grandparent that I knew. I loved and appreciated you for all that you did. You were a precious soul and a comfort to have around. Even though you're miserable, we know I saw your time. Your laugh, your smile, your burp, and your joy was everything, not to mention your cooking. And I know I'm going to miss you a lot. I didn't get to see you as much as I like, but I'm happy to know that I saw you live your life and fought your fight. Sickness took you from us, but it's just something you couldn't bear. But I know you're in God's hands and you have a shoulder to be secure. I love you to the ends of the earth and I just want you to know that even though you're gone, I still remember your glow. You swore you could dance, but we know you can't. But yet still what we did was to hide you while we can. You would tell me I'm a Jezebel, but I know that's just you. When you want better for us, you speak your truth. A lot will take it as a disrespect, but for me on the other end, I know it's for the best. For all of you who know my grandma, you would know she needs your me too loud. But I just want you to know, Grandma, that I'm your Jezebel and I'm going to make you proud. The last time I saw you, you did not have so much of a glow. But yet still in that moment, you tried to let it show. I said, what's up, Grand? You said, the day I began, I wash them in a half. We laughed together and spoke on things. And I'm going to miss you, but I know you're good. As the song says, I hope you're dancing in the sky. And I hope you're singing in the angels' choir. And I hope the angels know what they have. I'm happy to know that you're at peace and heaven is the right place for you. You may not be with me anymore, but my love for you will keep the flow. Death leaves a heartache, no one can heal. Love leaves a memory, no one can steal. Rest in peace, Grandma. I love you forever and always. We hit it off 
And we will sit down, we eat together, we chat together, we laugh together, we cry together. Because both of us lost children and we cried together. As time progressed, um, we got separated because I changed my career path. When I told her my intention to change my career path, she encouraged me on. Oh, as a matter of fact, she was one of my biggest cheerleaders. She said, you got out there, you can do it. Yeah, she pushed me. Um, in 20, you know we separated, we kept in touch. But in 2020, I met her, we were talking, and every time we knew we had to get up. And so we were talking, and she gave me the devastating news about her diagnosis. Oh my God, it tore me apart. But when she started to talk and told me how she coaxed, she literally coaxed the doctor to give her her diagnosis because if she was sick and not her family and they were asking for her gift for family members. She said, Yeah, like coaxing you. I'm telling you, I'm them sick. I mean sick. I know I don't know what they're doing. So we can know how to look out yourself. <laughs> I was sad, but then I had to laugh. Um, we kept in touch. In December, in December, I went to visit her because I heard she wasn't doing well. And as I reached my house, she said, yeah, we're glad to see you. Know. We just watched me here. Come pat you out for me. Pat out her here. We talked the usual talk. She told me who she hadn't seen in a while. I know she haven't heard from I know she don't know where they are. But she wasn't doing well. So I promised her that I would come and look for her. But before I left, I said to her, Miss Kathleen, you I didn't even say you, I said we we run run already. Nothing is left in this world. I hope you give your heart to the Lord. She said, yes, Miss Kim. A Sunday we go to church. We were going to church. She said, Ken, because of orange hill, a burning thing of my shoulder. I said to myself, girl, that's the best thing you could do. And um, even though I didn't get to revisit her, we kept in touch. When I got the news that she passed, I was devastated. But I remember that she told me that she had been in the right with God. And so this evening, I'm not worried. I'm saying, sleep on my friend. You were a beautiful friend to me. You were such a sweet person with that infectious smile. Even when I'm sad and kept in talk to me, I just sometimes I just laugh. And this evening, I'm going to say goodbye. Me. So help me sing this chorus. For so long, bye bye. So long, bye bye. Bye bye to your pain and your sorrows. So.
And then we will have an item from Mixie and Novelet, Cousin Long. And then we will call Marsha Marston to do a remembrance on behalf of Jennifer Marston, Kathleen's friend. <laughs> She is gone. 
there were, was water crisis in Benin. One day, my father wanted something at the shop. So he called to Kevin from the house. While he was standing at the gate, tell her if she sees Lasha or Bolo, tell her one day to come up here. So she went herself to him and bring her bucket with her. Asked him what he needed. So he told her, so he told her he wanted one of them to go to the shop. She took it, she took it upon herself and went to the shop for him. And she ended up getting not one but two buckets of water. My father said to her, make sure you serve it and don't come back anymore. When leaving, I never knew it would it was the last time I would see her face to face. Until I heard she was not doing well. But instead of getting good news about her, they were not they were nothing good about it. I spoke to her about two weeks before on the phone. She told me about her condition. There was nothing I could say to her after she explained to me about her condition. But to tell to tell her to rest as much as she can, only to get the news on the passing of on the of her passing on the first of March 2024, another steward of the community has passed on. Your labor, your labor has ended, but your memories will live on in your lives forever. Kathleen, you have played your part in many lives and paid and paid well. Marcia, Denroy, Betty, Natalie, Nadia, Sherry, and our grandchildren, keep the faith and be strong. Cry, cry if you must. Tears is a language you don't understand. Kathleen, Miss Kathleen, Kathy, wherever you rest in peace. Amen, amen. And you see, when we come to a funeral service, it's really a time of reflection. It's a time for us to think about our own lives. And the fact that you are born, death is appointed unto you. We want to thank money steward for the scripture reading. And Mitzi and Nugget for that message. And I hope you were listening to the message in the song. Here is a great day of judgment when we all have to stand before God. And then we heard from Jennifer. And for those of us who live in the community of Benin, we know that Kathleen and Jennifer were good friends. You see them morning? You see them evening? You see them afternoon, you see them night, they were like Sammy's twin. And so I know that she spoke from the heart. Now at this time, we have another community member. And I think this person is the most fitting person to do the community reflection. Because if he doesn't know you, then you don't live in Bay. And so, we are going to to do the reflection on behalf of the community of Benin. And following the reflection, we will have a tribute from Sean Myers, who is a friend, but this will be done by Topaz Don. For those who know me, you will realize that I will speak the truth. First, I must congratulate Jennifer Dix Marston for making up the captain. I know the right from the fiction. It is good that she had called and make it right. Amen? Right. You know, the next thing is I'm so happy that while I stand here, I'm looking at a lot of young persons who were in church while I was here by a leader, still right before me. And then I saw another group that's a smile and you from the group. So I'm going to invite the, the, the old church group to stand. All of you to come to the church. All of you who is in church with us. Are you are to stand. And Philip. And Noah. And Audrey. And Dirt. And Cherry. And, Cherry, and Christine. Shepard. All, all of you. And I noticed someone at the back standing. I want to invite also 
all the summer area, all summer area club members to stand to. Because can they share with us in those days? Wow. Right, Edri and Pedri and all of us. Good, 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 good. Thank you very much. As a child, the first time I saw a week, you know what it's called a week? Anybody want to make this video? Oh, you yeah, want me. So the first time I witnessed a week, I, I am this Kathy for a while. And when she came back to Ben, I was shocked to see Kathy with a different color here and a long booty. I know I made some comment to her. I told her immediately that if people think this were able to take up your head to change your hairstyle, your poor husband would know me. Because so many years ago. Anyway, I call her Rebel. Anybody know that name? Yes. Okay, but yeah, one more. Anybody know the word the name Maki? Maki? Well, she was my daughter. Anybody know this word Nazi? Anybody know the word Nazi? I thought some Nazi were here today. I don't see a Nazi. Nazi, we call the labor rights Nazi. Right, so she was a labor right. And we had some we had some altercation on technical parties. So the Nazis are here. I know I haven't seen all of you. Don't hide yourself. You should be in you should be in the Now, on our street, on our street, I call it Market Street. You have the Lawsons. Well, maybe they're here, so it's okay. The Lawsons, Captain's grandmother's house, and Miss Iris' house. Everybody know those houses? Yes. Those three houses did not reflect Adventism in the community. All the houses were Seventh-day Adventists. Now, one day, Captain came to me. And anybody know my grandmother, Margaret? Anybody know her? She said, what, what, Why are you calling money? Those things I heard coming out of your mouth, don't mess up. Why are you calling money? She did not answer my grandmother because my grandmother was a rough lady. Anyway, um, I notice now that here we have two pastors also out of the group, that's Philip and Hainsworth. Congratulations. Kathleen was very friendly and social. Very, very friendly and social. And I heard that Marsha alluded to something that whenever there was a death in the farm, in the community, or in a sickness, I know for sure she would not have left that place until the person or the person is put up. I know that about her. When we decided to put the, the tent up, I was happy because Kathy was sick. And I said, maybe it's the right time for the tent in the community. We reached a place where the Friday prior to her death, we went to visit her, passed by myself as a person. And when I look at Kathleen, I am seeing Kathleen at 20. Her little face was so straight and beautiful. She extended her hand and we prayed with her. And I hope to God that while we pray, she had made things right. Our community, Benin, is still hoping that the young people of Benin will give themselves to the Lord. Yes. So, and stuff like that. I'm also want to say this evening that when I look at Benny, is Benny here? Yeah. Where is he? Please stand some. Come, come here, Benny. Come here. Yeah. Clap the mama. Clap him. Yeah. And I'm going to congratulate you and the community. Yeah. He stood up with his mother. Yeah. 
for remembering Kathleen. But you know, I, I'm sitting there and I said, how oh, nobody don't talk about her cleanliness? And that is something that stood out. As a child, I can remember especially when they have a fresh program. Kelly would tie the broom and she would sweep and sweep and sweep. She loved when her surrounding was clean. And I really remember that about her. And of course, that laughter. When Kathleen stand up in, stood up in Benin, and you give her a joke, you say all the way close to Lincoln and hear her laughing. Because she, she was a happy woman. She, she was happy and she made it known. And I'm just encouraging us to reflect on the good memories and that will help you to go through day by day. Now the Brownstone Seventh-day Adventist Church is known as the Community Church. We're known as the Community Church because one of our objectives is to really serve the community. Because if you are serving God, and you're not serving the community, then something is wrong. And so we have our center of charity. And this is where we give back to the community. And it is not just for those who are Seventh-day Adventists. As long as the community members are in need, and as a church, we can do something, we do it. And so this afternoon, the offering that will be collected is in aid of our community service. And so we're asking you to give generously so that we can give back to the community. I know you have been sitting for a while, and so at the appropriate time, I'm going to invite us to stand as we sing the hymn, The Lord's My Shepherd.
to each one of us with its profound beauty and depth. As a child, I remember being captivated by her infectious energy. Even today, I said I got my strength from my mom. I'm the baby, but I'm the mother for all my siblings. Well, most of them, I would say. My mom embodied the essence of joy, bringing a splash of vibrant colors and radiant light wherever she went. Her laughter was like the twinkling of wind chimes, bringing a sense of harmony, harmony and joy to our gathering. She had the magical ability to turn new day moments into treasured memories, creating a canvas of love and happiness that stretched across generations. As, a, as an adventurer of heart, at heart, my mom embraced the world with open arms, soaking in its beauty and wonders with an unquenchable thirst. She was a woman of many talents, experience that made her a repository, a repository oh my God, of knowledge and wisdom. Her stories were not just tales, but windows into a vibrant world filled with adventure, discoveries, and profound insight. Sitting with her was aching to embarking on a mesmerizing journey where one could traverse distant lands, meet fascinating characters, and explore the depth of human emotions and experience. My mom was also a nurturing, a nurturing person Garden of Love, where relationship blossomed under the canopy of her care and affection. She loves everybody's kids. As a mentor, she guided us through the path of life, her wisdom serving as a beacon of light in the darkness. She had an innate ability to perceive the potential in individuals, fostering growth and nurturing dreams with her encouraging words. And Ms. Carter said that before, whatever you are doing, she is always there to push you. My mom is my biggest cheerleader. In the community, my mom was a pillar of strength, a source of inspiration, and a beacon of hope. Her altruism knew no bounds, as she dedicated herself to causes close to her heart, impacting many lives with her generosity and kindness. She was an advocate for the voiceless, a defender of the weak, and a promoter of equality and justice. Her philanthropic efforts were not just acts of charity, but a testament to her belief in the innate goodness of humanity and her commitment to making the world a better place. My mom embraced like me with a sense of wonder and reverence. She saw the deeper meaning of existence, exploring the realms of spirituality and philosophy with a keen mind and an open heart. Through her, we learned the heart of mindfulness, the beauty of living in the present, and the joy of embracing life with gratitude and positivity. As we stand at this juncture, bid farewell to the life that has been guiding light in our lives, we also celebrate the journey that was vibrant, inspiring, and incredibly enriching. My mom, through her presence, added a beautiful melody to the symphony of our lives, young and old alike, a melody that will continue to echo in our hearts for our years. Through tears, we may blow to tears may blow our vision. Today we found we found comfort in rich tapestry of memories that carefully leaves behind. As we navigate through the landscape of life without our physical presence, we carry her spirit within us, a spirit that embodies joy, love, compassion, and a zest of life. Today I also ask my cousin Jane Taylor, my cousin-in-law Susan and my daughter to stand here with me today. I don't live here, but let me tell you, these two ladies right here, they stood up for my mom. They were always there. I have international credit on my phone it's only so I can talk to my mom whenever I want. And I can 
remember asking her, how oh, you don't call me from money? And she would say, because me don't know if you're there work, me don't want to bother you. And I would say, mom, you can call me anytime. If I see a missed call, I will return your call. When she got so sick, Susan and JT was always there. And sometimes she, she can't even speak on the phone. She would be just groaning in pain because of the excruciating pain that the cancer had her feeling. But she would be on the phone, and I know she would call me back. But I would say, Mom, it's okay. I am here. But if you want to get off the phone, just call me whenever, and I'll answer. At times, so that our JT would just put the phone close to her, and she would just listen to me speaking, or I'll just listen to her breathing heavy, or groaning in pain. Ladies, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for everything that you have done for my mom. On behalf of me and my siblings, we want to say thank you. I know at times they said, look, it's not a job. It's my auntie, it's not a job. You could have not turned up, but you would turn up every day. Every day of the week you would turn up. Even if you have something to do, you ladies would turn up before you go, after you go. And I want to say thank you so much. Good afternoon. As I sit in heaven and watch you every day, I try to let you know with signs that I never went away. I hear you when you're laughing and watch you as you sleep. I even place my arms around you to call you as you weep. I see you wish the days away, begging to have me home, so I try to send you signs so you know that you're not alone.
rest in peace, Catherine. This song was done on behalf of Natalie, her daughter. To any and everyone, 
even without being asked, she would offer time, patience, material, or financial aid when needed. In 2017, Kathleen became ill and was later diagnosed with cancer. The deterioration of her health led to numerous hospital visits between St. Anne's Bay and Montego Bay. She was hospitalized at the St. Anne's Bay Hospital and did her chemo and most treatments in Montego Bay. Hospitals treat medically, but families care with love. Hence, while at home, it was her family who took on the responsibility. Her main caregiver, when she became unable to, was her one remaining son, Don Roy, Belly, big up to you, who stopped working in order to be her constant companion. Regular visits from her sister, Gwendolyn, assistance from her niece, Jane Taylor, niece-in-law, Salita Rob, Susan, thank you, other relatives, neighbors, and friends, and financial and spiritual aid from her daughters who lived overseas and grandson, Ogan. Kathleen, however, realized that there was still a very important piece missing from her puzzle, and as such, she gave her life to God during her illness. Hyacinth Maud McDonald did not lose a battle to cancer. After seven years of fighting for survival, she handed the fight over to the Most High God Almighty, who all know saw it fit to welcome her into his kingdom, freeing her from pain and suffering. On the 1st of March, 2024, Kathleen went to her home, prepared for her by her Heavenly Father. She leaves behind five children, 22 grandchildren, eight great-grandchildren, sisters, nieces, nephews, uncles, aunts, and other relatives and friends. We have all lost a loved one, and it's okay to be sad. But think about where she's coming from, where she's going, and let us try to be glad. We have a personal angel looking down at us and smiling. And yes, she's hoping that we are smiling too. Rest in peace, Auntie. I also have a message that Natalie sent to me for me to read on her behalf. Um, let's give me a minute, please. A tribute to my loving mother from Natalie Stewart. In loving memory of Hyacinth Maud McDonald, Kathleen, Cathy, Rebel, I miss you, Mom. Today we gather to honor the remarkable life of Hyacinth Maud McDonald, affectionately known as Kathleen, Cathy, Rebel. Her presence illuminated our lives with love, nurturing kindness, and boundless strength. Mommy Kathleen transcended the role of a mother. She was a guiding light, navigating us through life's challenges with unwavering grace and wisdom. In my darkest hours, she stood as a steadfast guardian for my oldest children while I toured abroad. Her nurturing love rooted in the same care she bestowed upon my siblings and I, ensured that my absence never felt distant. Mommy ingeniously facilitated our connection through phone calls and messages. Even though my three elders has grown up, she stands with me and them. Mom would go crazy if a strong of fear hurt any of my baby's head. Here comes my daughter, added to my family 18 years after my third son. Mom never leave my side. Mom was still my right and die until this day. Sorry, Daddy, I love you too. It was never a dull moment with, with my mom, as she would make sure to call everyone to find out if I'm okay. And when she called me without an answer, after having my last child, Amir, mom became so overprotective of me that she would call me so often, like call is run, like call was running out of style. To the amount of missed calls, seeing if I didn't pick up. Me anxious thinking that something was wrong. When I returned her call and say, Mommy, what do you? She would say, Nothing. May I call and can get you? So we just want to know, say, Okay. After this calls exchange into delightful dance parties with my two younger children, Amir and Monique. 
She also quickly rooted in her homeland by sending my favorite Jamaican products with persons she trusted and keeping me abreast of the latest of what's going on. Good, bad, and indifference. During my night shift on the job, when stories ran dry, Mom transformed our conversations into impromptu gospel concerts or prayer meetings, providing spiritual solace amidst the solitude. One of her recurring prayers was a lament over our financial circumstances, wishing I didn't have to be working so hard and so late at night. Mom says, Natalie, we wish to have money, so you don't have to work at night, and then a big laugh. I yearn to return home and give her the love she has bestowed upon me and my siblings, my siblings, my ch siblings' children and my children. I'm renowned for my authentic dishes and fulfill her anticipation of her weekly Friday video chats and meal prepping sessions. Even though she could not eat or help me prepare through those video calls, Mother always encouraged me to be the best version of myself and set a foundation for my kids. Our nightly prayers became when life's burden seemed too heavy to bear. I cherished those moments on the night before Mom died. Me, Sherry, Oshin, Mom, and other family friends was on a group call. I tried to make her laugh, but she couldn't, and I was trying to be strong, but I know my weakness was creeping in. So I said to everyone, I'm going to pray. And I told mom, I can see you. I can talk, but please wave your hands to me if you know this is me talking to you. And she did. Said to her, I'm going to pray for you. And she waved her hands again. Our last prayer together on February 29, 2024 holds a special place in my heart as it became a poignant farewell the day before her passing on March 1st, 2024. Mom, nurturing spirit and gentle demeanor, left an indelible mark on all who knew her. Her love knew no bounds, radiating warmth and compassion to everyone she encountered. Through her infectious laughter, comforting embrace, sage advice, and heartfelt prayers, Mom had an extraordinary ability to make others feel valued and cherished. She lived a life of purpose embodying courage in the face of adversity and perseverance in times of trial. Mom's resilience and determination inspired us to trans trans transcend our limitations and strive for greatness. As we reminisce about the memories we share, let us cherish the moments of joy, laughter, and love that Mom had bestowed upon us. Though we may no longer be with us, in though she may no longer be with us in body, her spirit lives on in the countless lives she's touched and the enduring legacy of love she leaves behind. Today we bid farewell to our beloved mother, granddaughter, friend, sister, auntie, and confidant. While we grieve her loss, we find solace in the enduring love etched in our hearts. Rest in peace, dear Iacinth, Maud McDonald, Kathleen, Cathy. Their light will continue to shine brighter in our lives guiding us through the darkness with the warmth of your love. Thank you for the love and caring, thank you for loving and caring for us and our children. Thank you so, so much for your undivided attention and you always be there. Mom, I miss you. I want to extend my heartfelt gratitude to everyone who joined us to celebrate my mother's life. Candlelight, grave living and their wake. To the pastor, Mr. Trevor Thomas, the compassionate staff of the Cummings Funeral Home, the dedicated team at the St. Bay Hospital, Cornwall Regional Hospital, Dr. Green and Ben in Brownstone, your support and care in this time surpasses words. A special thank you to Jane Taylor, cousin, Salisa Rock, cousin in law, and my brother, Donald Allen, who fondly known as Belly, who stood frigid by her side as she drew her final breath. To my father, Donald Stewart, whose unwavering love and strength have been pillars of support. Dennis Harold Walker, Backup, for your continuous support. Miss Patsy Ferguson and Mishka, for helping mom to ac accumulate her medication on a timely manner. Daniel Campbell, I appreciate all you have done for mom. And to all our neighbors, family and friends who stepped in and gave their support. 
to my two sisters, Lordia and Marcia, peace be and abide this room. May the seeds that you all sow, so shall you be. You only live once. Oh 
in the area. And when about they took us to visit Miss Kathleen, and I'm grateful for the opportunity that was given up to me. Uh, so our first elder and uh, those who were here to give us stop, to pray with her, to encourage her, so that God will give her the strength that she needs. And also, um, if the relationship between she and her maker needs any mending, that she would have done it at that time. I realize that the vast majority of persons in the congregation are all members of the Benin community. Am I speaking the truth? So that means I would have preached 26 sermons. So you are probably get a lot of messages. Not true. Just one person say yes. So see. So therefore, I will not preach to show you. Then preach for everybody else. Because I never get the message. Because some of you didn't even get to see. So I will preach to the remaining. But before we go into the word, let us pray. Our kind of Father in heaven, we approach your throne in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. At this time, dear Lord, we have a family in bereavement, community in bereavement. They need a word from you. I pray, dear God, that you will speak through me in a way in which you alone can. To mend broken hearts. And also, Heavenly Father, to bring us to the reality that we have an appointment with death. And help us, dear Lord, through this word to know how to make preparation for that time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, scripture is taken from. Ecclesiastes 9 and I will be reading verses 5 and 6 in your hearing. The Bible reads, For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything, neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Also, their love and their hatred and their envy is perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done on the soul. For the next couple of minutes, I will speak to us on the caption. Why is it? Why is God? My brothers and sisters, the book Ecclesiastes was written by one of the wisest men who has ever lived. The living, the dead, and the unborn could never and will never be able to measure up to the wisdom that this man by the name of Solomon possessed. My brothers and sisters, his life was brought under the microscope after an adulterous relationship between his, well, I should say a mom, his father, David, who took his mother, Bathsheba, from his stepfather, Uriah. I know it's a bit confusing, but let me tell you something. So proper do I have nothing over the Bible. And brothers and sisters, that ungodly relationship produced two children, the first of which died, and when the second born, Solomon was born. The Bible says that the Lord loved Solomon. And brothers and sisters, Solomon was next in line to become king. And when his father David eventually died, God appeared unto Solomon and said to Solomon, Solomon, tell me, you are no king. 
What should I give unto you? And Solomon, without even thinking long and hard, realizing the huge responsibility that was placed on his shoulder, which was to lead a people, God's people, Solomon, instead of asking for wealth, instead of asking for fame, instead of asking for the life of his enemies, the Bible said that Solomon had a strange request. Can you imagine if God supposed to ask some of us a request like that? Chances are some of us would probably run God into bankruptcy. Am I speaking the truth so far? But Solomon was measured in his response. And he asked God for wisdom. He also asked God for an understanding heart. Because Solomon was about to lead a people. And Solomon understood something that our leaders should understand. Unless the Lord build the house, we labor in vain that build. And true wisdom comes from God. Hence, Solomon asked God for wisdom. And brothers and sisters, God was impressed in the prayer of this young man. And the Bible said that because he did not ask for wealth, because he did not ask for fear, God gave him wisdom and then some. My brothers and sisters, his wisdom was put on display when two harlots came unto him and they shared that both of them own the same evil. I've often heard about cases in which men are jackets. Are they get jacket? Get jacket, yeah. But some men are jackets too. But I've never heard a case about a woman getting a jacket by choice. Am I speaking the truth, somebody? Or an illegitimate child? So when Solomon heard about Watchman's time, because one lady stated that the living baby is her baby, and the other lady ruled on her baby, thus her baby died. And let me tell you something, it wasn't in the age in which you had DNA in order to solve the problem. And I can picture Solomon now as he turned to the ladies and asked, is this your baby? And one lady said yes. And then he turned to the other lady. Is this your baby? And the other lady said yes. And you might wonder to yourself. How could Solomon solve this? But God gave him wisdom from an eye. And Solomon said this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide the baby in two. I'm going to give you half. And I'm going to give you the other half. The woman who was the mother looked and said to Solomon, I think that's a brilliant idea. No wonder you're a wise man, Solomon. But when this mother reflected on the nine months that she carried her baby in her womb, she turned to Solomon and said, you know what? Give this other woman the baby. I would rather live and know that my baby is alive and somebody else is taking care of that baby. And then Solomon said, no, you are the man. And brothers and sisters, based on what is he did, his fame ran rampant through not just Jerusalem, but through the ends of the world. That people from every nook and cranny came just to listen to the wisdom that this man by the name of Solomon possessed. And brothers and sisters, Solomon was doing extremely well. He built the temple of the true and living God. He trained his servants. He was under a massive construction project in Jerusalem. And brothers and sisters, Solomon was doing well. Until he was outsmart 
by women. Sometimes as men, we think that we know it all. But we can meet up on one particular woman that has us a six and help us realize that we know nothing at all. Am I speaking to you? You don't want to answer. Because any man will say that women are all weakness. I have one particular woman and she is my weakness. That woman know my secrets. No wonder I call her my wife. Because I know that it is safe. And brothers and sisters, he was doing well until he met not just the wrong woman, but the wrong women. And brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us that his heart was turned from God because of these strange women who worshipped all kinds of strange gods. They turned his heart from God. Solomon moved from being a wise king to become a foolish king because the Bible says that the fool said in his heart that there is no God. He was worshipping all kinds of gods except the true and living God. And brothers and sisters, God tried his best in order to reach him. And towards the end of his life, he started to reflect on the life that he lived and the years that he would have wasted and realized that all these years were wasted years when he turned his back on God. All that he acquired, he counted as if it was nothing because he turned his back on God. I saw my ear to tell you that whenever a person leaves God, all that they accomplish in life, if they are fortunate to accomplish anything, is nothing. Everything is nothing unless we have God. And brothers and sisters, towards the end of his life, Solomon realized something, that people will use his life as a point of reference to do wrong. Hence, Solomon got pain. He got people. Already, he would have written Proverbs. Already, he would have written Songs of Solomon. And now he was about to write his final book because he wanted people from Bible time right down to real time to understand certain things when it comes on to life that all in life is vanity and vexation of spirit. Solomon wanted people to understand that there is a time for everything under the sun. A time to mourn and a time to die. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather up stones. Everything of a time and a season. And for some of us, we are almost out of time. And Solomon wanted us to understand the brevity the shortness of life and when he reached to chapter 9 he sent a message to each and every one of us who are alive we have the breath of God moving through our lungs through our nostrils and not times through our mouths and sometimes we feel like we are all of that and about the cheeks. We are healthy and we are strong. And some of us, we are so good looking, we don't have no time for God. Church is known for only those who are dying and those who are old and they can't go to parties anymore. Church is only for them. But someone wanted people to understand each and every one of us, we have what is called a common denominator called it. And Solomon wish that somebody would have enough sense to understand one thing that the living they know that they shall die. But the dead knows not anything. Let me look at the living and then let me talk about the dead. My brothers and sisters, one of the
prerequisites to die is to live. The mere fact that you are alive, we have a death sentence and we move on our heads. It is a matter of time before we come face to face with this world's common denominator called death. If you believe that you're going to die, if you know that you are going to die, therefore we must do something about it. Am I speaking the truth so much? Because ever so often, persons wait until they are dying or when they are dead to give their life to Jesus Christ. Am I speaking the truth? Some of us we believe that God is in the hospital business. Or God is in the golden ages business. So when a person is old, when a person is sick, when a person is dying, that is the time we want to give them over to God. Am I speaking the truth? And when they are dead, we take their carcasses inside of the temple. Because we believe that as God as they come to this church, it means that they must make it in the kingdom of God. But my Bible tells me that the dead prays not the Lord. Because if you don't accept God in your lifetime, you cannot accept God at death time. Am I speaking the truth so far? And if you know that you are going to die, it is very important for us to do something about it. If you believe that there is a God in heaven who is taking record of everything that we do in this life, the onus is upon us to develop a relationship with God. Don't tell me this foolishness that hypocrites are in the church. I know that because of my pastor. But I realize one thing that everywhere you go past the barnet, I broke up in hypocrites. I go down to Scotia Bank and I find them down there. I take the taxi and I find them in there. I go to the market and I find them in there. I go to the supermarket and I find them in there. I go to the embassy and I find them there. I take a prayer and I find them there. I go to America and I find them there. I know the hypocrite don't run me out of the bank. No, don't run me out of America. But they are running out of the church. So much, we are giving them too much power. And some, they are finding excuses not to give their heart to Jesus Christ. We are waiting. When you're done. And then we talk about all kinds of foolishness that will prevent us from giving our hearts to Jesus Christ. But I call you to understand something. That the same hypocrites we see in the church, they are closer to God than many of you. Am I speaking to you? They have a possibility that God can change them. What about what Pastor Christ? If you know. What Christianity is all about. And the Christians in the church, they are not living as Christians. You come out of where you are and come back here and show us how we are to live. Don't worry about hypocrites because they would have to answer to God. And let me tell you something. You too would have to answer to God. The Bible says that the living know that they shall die. But the dead don't know anything. Question. Let me see the hands of those who know that one of these days they might die. Raise your hand. Now they're under two days, but some of them are going like a little bit slow. And some will probably go on like arthritis and they still have cheating symptoms. Let me see the hands of those of you who believe I am know. That the time might come when you go to die. Raise your hand. Alright, more and more. Then, Master, 
if you know say you go there. Then mama, if you know say you go there. What make you the out of the world? I enjoy yourself. When you know that you can live the ungodly life, you can't live for that godly God. It is people like speaking the truth to somebody. Because some people are waiting until they are dead to give their heart to God. But He is not the God of the dead. The Bible says He's the God of the living. This time for us, the wise of us are people. We say it's time for us to have saints. There was a time in which, as a country, this was a God the country, when our children had no other choice than to go to the church. If you're not parents, and in Pentecostal, and our next one, Adventist, and you go to them over the weekend, you know what happened? You have got church in two days. Am I speaking the truth? And when we saw them more churches in Jamaica, we were going to cut their people. If this is not Christian, I'm going to know us about that woman. I said that the Bible says that the living know that they shall die, but the dead know something. There was a time in which a funeral call, um, service was a wake up call for everybody who could live. But no funeral service changed no more. There was a time in which they heard them. Mr. Cummings said, Holy. A long one got worse. I went to keep this in the earth. They used to run around and play that they are ball. I might speak a truth somewhere. And they used to have some kind of song when they used to play. Yes, man, they used to play some Jim Reeves. They used to play some crazy thrillers. I might speak a truth somewhere. And you know those funeral songs that they know when they play in those verses. And brothers and sisters, when people used to come to see the they never used to have much selling outside. No, they never used to have much selling. People used to respect church. Am I speaking to? Yeah. Again, drop like the heart. They used to respect church. So when people used to come to church, when they know it is a funeral services, somebody used to come in what they call three sisters. You know three sisters? But now they want to go to church and now we have one sister. Am I speaking to somebody? Now when they listen to what is playing in some of the verses, it is like a dancer. God damn, mother of them, being a man. Am I speaking to you? I am both of you are driving on Canada. But I want some people to be like you. Then jump out. I mean, I can't get it. There was a time in which people used to ball when they come to funeral. But they're not balling. They're not balling. I'm a matter of fact, some of them are not going inside a church. They're all that poor. And they're not drinking liquor and smoke stiff. Am I speaking to you? And some of the audacity and the temerity to drink it inside of God's church. And if I'm a pastor, the woman. And I said, I'm going to go to church. Because when we walk with God, I said, Come on, this is the same thing. You know, I'm going to go to church. I don't want nobody to say, but I pay to you here. So we can end it at any time. Because God's house, there are rules and regulations. I speak with you. And so, because of the change, People must sit there and tell us nothing, you know. So people are there and jump out. Not no special about it again. And some Christians, when people die, they say, oh, I'm somewhere on the children of God. Oh, all that you're in a better place. And all those things. And anybody who can die in. You drink liquor, and you're dead, you're gone in. And you're sick with angels in heaven. You're mad. Back your work, man. Everybody can go and see a place. Because you can be a criminal. And me and your guy see a place. If me and your guy see the same place, me and your guy see a camp. Am I speaking to you? What am I doing here? I said, I'm living more. 
that they shall die. I said, the living know that they shall die. Some, some of us that is sending us messages. And that give a cancer. We don't want nobody to say they have cancer. But what are we here most with my exercise? Am I speaking true? Yes. Oh, yeah, God, sir. He was on the side of staff with me. But then they don't answer. Am I speaking true? Yes. It's an APR to Jesus Christ. He had come to that kind of excuses. Am I speaking true? Yes. Sometimes God has sent some messages to us. We realize so we are getting cold and green. Shine off the air. We get weak. We die here. We get young girl, a woman that get young man, so they feel you, and then God give you heart right to snipe me, so they don't feel you again, but some of you stop and he fought it. I said, you listen, no. The person who is dead would love to eat it. Yes. 
Because some people who are dead, some of them die of hunger. You do that. Am I speaking the truth? The clothes that the clothes in, in the casket, they don't even know what they are wearing, but they would appreciate it in their lifetime. Am I speaking the truth? The clothes of the casket that they are in, they wish that they have a comfortable bed to sleep in. Tears of me cry. A death. They will love to see those tears. They will love to hear the I love yous. They will love to see the faces in their lifetime. But some of us, we say, we better let us before they see certain things. Am I speaking to you? Let me tell you something. I sat and I listened to the eulogy. I listen to the others. And pardon me for singling out a particular person. But pardon me, because sometimes when you talk to people, get upset. But I'm not here for some of this. Me and my talk to the person. Baby. Yes, I don't want to have a belly. Baby. And I'm going to talk to the baby. Did I operate as his mom woman? Because in the year of doing her life, me sit down and me hear about Billy. I'm moving like a bullet, you know. Oh, Billy, you said three, this step me. That's why some of us say, "Hey, man, what we need to do is to take a page out of Billy's book and learn how to treat our own family members." I sat and I listened. Oh, people, who are not in a fire, they are fire in them because they have to support. Because we know that the US is stronger than the dollar. Because we don't know where to go. Am I speaking to you? Because I want to live. They have to get 150, they have to get 1 dollar. I'm with you. They used to talk to other children and the people. Just listen to breathing over the phone. And I find them. And I know what parents say, I took it right next to our camera room. It's a shame, this is a scandal. And then you walk to my funeral, come back. No, 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 no. This is a pop to show to you guys. We can have a pop to show to you. We don't show dead people that they love them. We show them listen that they love them. We show them their mother. We appreciate them. Some people have big shots in our own community conscience, can you mean that one? Some people have big shots in our own just to show off because you're a doctor, lawyer, Indian chief. I might be getting to it. I'm going to all the king's horses. I'm going to all the king's bed. Go to God's store. They can't say that you come from our aristocratic side. Hypocrite. 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 I said they live in one of their shall die. But they did. No was nothing. No was nothing. My prayer is that we will look at our own mortality and realize that we have a deed with death. And make some of the fixing up in our lives. Am I speaking to you? Find yourself in our church. I will find a female. If I pass the bar, I will not be able to promote him. I will promote man. I will remind a school. I will speak the truth, somebody. Take up your Bible and read. I get the Lord and God of the Bible. Have worship in the room. Not only send your children to church, but take your children to church. Don't listen. And the time will come that you are going to die. Because when our heads touches thy pillow, we should say, It is well. It is well. And I to ask the question I wonder if it is well with my soul.
But we should know that everything is working. So my encouragement to you as family, as friends, now is the time to, to develop stronger relationship with our friends and our family members. But most of all, my brothers and sisters, now is the time for us to know God for ourselves. You may know the Prime Minister, you may know the President of the United States of America, you may know all these big shot people in the world, but if you don't know God, you don't know anyone. So my encouragement to you is, before you die, see the Lord God bless you. Yeah. 
get into a better relationship with your Almighty God. So to this end, we put the family members into your hands, dear God, and ask you to work out your providence in their lives in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the sweet Holy Spirit. Let God's people say, Amen. Amen. All right, so we will have the recession on again when we all sing the wondrous love of Jesus, when we all get to heaven, and at the singing of the, the chorus after the first stanza, then we will depart in an orderly manner. You have been good
Good. You do the, you understand? No, you can't stop. Okay. All right. Oh, my God. All right. All right. Is it something that can wheel it in easily? Huh? Okay. Alright, you wanted the pitala for this piece. Ready? Family members, well wishes and friends. May I have your attention, everybody. The word of the Lord declares to us that yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Now is Christ risen from the dead and became the first fruit of them that slept. In him shall all be made alive. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. In the name of the Lord. Marcia, darling, come and sit up here, baby. Yes, you are right. I'm afraid that's what you're doing. Come with me, okay? You want all the wreaths to go inside there or someone go on, on top where we are? Okay. We have one here going inside. I want to check out. Hold on, gentlemen. Hold on, gentlemen. Yes, stop at that. Let's go again. All flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the field. The grass withers, and the flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. For as much as it pleased Almighty God to call from this life the soul of our dear sister and aunt and friend, we therefore commit her body to the ground, ash to ash, and dust to dust, and leave her soul to God, her maker and savior, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to life immortal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died and is risen, and is even at the right hand of God. May we pause for prayer at this time. But if I may share a quick word after a sermon like what we've gotten at the church, there's nothing more to add to that. I just want to encourage, especially the, the children, the grandchildren, and those who are close to my aunt, and, the, and I want to say to you, Use this occasion to become closer together. Don't let this, the death of your mother, your grandmother, your aunt, don't let this death pull you apart. And I want to also say to those among us who are unsaved, who have not yet accepted Christ, time is running out. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you. God would have said to us that we brought nothing into the world and it is sure we are taking nothing out of this world. Lord, we thank you that you gave and you have taken. 
And even though we mourn, oh God, we cannot change our appointed time. So right now, God, we commit to you the family members, those who are left behind to mourn. Let them mourn. But God, I know that there are those who will mourn without hope and those who are mourning with hope. So we heard that our aunt, my aunt, accepted Christ before it was too late. We pray, God, that those who are left behind will also do the same. Have your way this evening, for we tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. There's a hymn on your program. If everybody knows me very well, I come from a family of singers, but it passed me. So that's why me preach. So I'm going to invite those who can sing well. Let us put blend our voices together as we sing the hymn on the program. When the world is called up yonder, I'll be there. Let us lift our voices and sing together. After two, one, two. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Some people know it better now, so they must start from the chorus. But we want to know it, but we start from the first verse. Let's go again after two. One, two. And the morning breaks eternal bright. When the saints on earth, and the whole, let us sing. When the world is called up yonder, when the world is called up yonder, when the world is called up yonder. When the world is called up yonder, I'll be there. On the bright and cloudless, on the glory, when the chosen ones, and the world is called up yonder, I'll be there. Lift your voice. Let us labor for the master from the And the world is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the world is called up yonder, when the world is called up yonder, we're going to sing the third verse again. Let us labor for the master from the door till setting sun. Then when all lift your voices, then let us sing. Can we sing the chorus again? When the world is called up, when the world is Hallelujah. Praise God. We just sang the song when the roll is called up yonder. I'll be there. And the question I ask you is where? We'll all be there. But where? You have that choice now to determine where you will be when the roll is called up yonder. I want to be where Jesus is. Is there somebody else with me? Yeah. I want to be where Jesus is when the role is called up yonder. Hallelujah. 
we're going to sing some choruses. I know I don't see any on the program, but I know Brownstone people know chorus. So, all right, we have a cheerleader. I want to leave this world. No more to roam. When life is over, some sweet day, I'm going away. Some sweet day, I'm going up with the barriers. I'm going to leave this world. No more to roam. Some sweet day. When life is over, some sweet day, I'm going away. When you see that, I'm gonna walk with the dark by and by. I'm gonna walk with the dark by and by. in the hospital. I'm gonna walk with the dark by and by. I'm gonna walk with the dark by and by. I'm gonna walk with the dark by and by. I'm gonna walk with the dark by and by. I'm gonna walk with the dark by and by. It's soon be done. 
when I get old, on the other side, I'm gonna shake my hands with candy. I wanna tell all the people good morning. I wanna sit down beside my Jesus. I wanna sit down and rest a little while. I am going to write my name up there. Write my name. Write my name up there. I'm gonna touch my finger on the golden pen, the golden pen, the golden pen. Touch my finger on the golden pen. Write my name up there. Write my name. Write my name. Write my name up there. I'm gonna touch my finger on the golden pen, the golden pen. Touch my finger. I am going home on the morning train. I am going home on the morning train. I am going home on the morning train. For the evening train will be too late. I am going home on the morning train. I am going home on the morning train. I am going home on the morning train. For the evening train will be too late. I am going home on the morning train. Believe us, walk right in. Believers walk right in and take your seat. Believers walk right in and take your seat. Believers walk right in and take your seat. I am going home on the morning train. One more time, if you miss me, no uncertainty. And if you don't find me, you know that I'm gone. And if you don't hear from me, don't go knocking at my door. I'll be gone in the twinkle of an eye. One more time, oh, if you miss me, don't go searching. And if you don't find me, you know that I'm gone. And if you don't hear from me, don't come knocking on my door. I'm there in the twinkle of an eye. One more time, say, don't miss me. Don't miss me. Don't come searching. If you don't find me, you know that I'm gone. And if you don't hear from me, don't come knocking on my door. I'll be there in the twinkle of an eye. Say goodbye. Oh, I 
on the other side, I'm gonna shake my hand with the elders. I wanna tell all the people good. I wanna sit down beside my. I wanna sit down beside my. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the time. God is good.
Yeah, the last prayer. Blessing from the Lord, and so let's receive the benediction at this time. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen and amen. God bless you. Get home safely to wherever you're going. May your soul rest in peace.